troops in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never do more the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Good morning, little warriors. I hope you're ready for a fun day, a fun Saturday, little warriors, and a special story. And I've titled this story, God's Story. It's about Easter and happy resurrection. But before I begin, I just want to welcome everyone for watching today. I want to welcome you, and um, I want to... Um, say a prayer before I begin, but I also want to thank La Hermosa Christian Church um, for sponsoring this um, lesson today. Um, I thank God for them and for the crafts 
that they send out to the little warriors so that y'all can do the activity. So let's take the time to pray this morning and just ask God to help us to learn what we're about to study today and about the lesson. Okay, little words, so we just close our eyes so we can begin. Dear God, as we come before you, each and every one of us, including the little warriors watching today, we ask you for just for, for you to bless your word, for you to help us, dear God, so that we can see the story behind Easter, the true meaning behind Easter. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for everything that you do. May you bless your word. May you help it to be a seed planted in our heart that it continues to grow each day. And we just ask you to bless your word. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. So today, how many of us know what tomorrow is? How many of us know that it's Easter? It will be Easter Sunday. But it's also called Happy Resurrection. And um, so this morning, I want to talk to you about what, what things we see in Easter. Well, we see things like, we see things like the eggs. We see the, the rabbit, the bunny. But you might think Easter's about a bunny or the eggs and about other things, you know, that celebrates Easter. But um, Easter, I want to let you know, is, and those things are true. We do use the eggs and things to hide them. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but Easter is truly about Jesus. It is about how much he loved us and how God sent him to rescue us. Amen. And I'm going to ask this question, but I know my little warriors, and I know my little warriors know this question. How many of you know who Jesus is? Raise up your hand, put it on the screen, let us know. How many of you know who Jesus is? Type it in, or if you can't type it in, ask someone to help you. Well, you're right. You're right, little warriors. He is the Son of God. Good job, little warriors. You're right. So you might ask, how did he rescue us, uh, Sister Adela? How, what do you mean um, he came to rescue us? Well, let's find out. So God had sent Jesus to rescue everyone. That includes you and I. Um, he came, he, he sent his son Jesus to rescue us, okay? Well, by rescuing us, it also meant that Jesus had to die. But you're saying, well, rescue us from what? Well, rescue us from, from sin, from death, so that we can have eternal life with God, with Jesus in heaven. And I know that many of you want that i want that and i know that many of you have that already and i have that already and i thank god for that but so you're saying sister della that god sent jesus and to rescue us from those things but he had to die for it well yes i am saying that and i know that it's it's sad when you hear that but let me encourage you, little warriors, but there's a happy ending to the end of the story. Remember, it's God's story, and we can find that story in Matthew 27. And I encourage you, or I encourage you to ask someone if you can't really fu fully read it. I encourage you to read it if you can on your own or not, you know, get someone to help you read it. And the story, the story that I'm about to tell you is in is is in this book Matthew it's in the New Testament and it starts in 27 so it also says that how many of us have ever said anything or done anything wrong well by rescuing us it meant Jesus had to die like I said earlier little warriors and you know that rescue us how well you know every mean word and action 
that we have done or that we have said, it deserves punishment, you know, especially when we're doing things that we're not supposed to be doing and we're, it's wrong. Well, it deserves a punishment. But Jesus took that punishment for us. And that's how he rescued us. He rescued us from the punishment of God. So he took our place. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you another question, little warriors. Now, during this time when Jesus was about to rescue us, and um, remember, God sent him to rescue us. And um, do you think that Jesus knew he had to die? Yes. But do you think, little warriors, that he wanted to? Well, the Bible says that Jesus really didn't want to, but he wanted to do what God wanted him to do. And he wanted to do what was right. And that was the will of God. And that is something that, that it is not what I want, but it is what God wants. And sometimes, little warriors, when we are so close to God, sometimes that comes so naturally. It just, you know, it... Um, it just, you know, you'll want to do it because you love God that much and you honor him that much. And you say, you know, God, you know, Heavenly Father, I don't mind. I want to do this because I love you that much. But it also says that at that time, when Jesus didn't want to do it, he also prayed. And he prayed to God to give him strength to do it. Amen. So. But he also said, not my will, Father, but your will be done. And that means not what I want, God, but what you want, God, for me to do. Amen? So let's talk about what happened that time that led up to Jesus dying. Well, um, I, I know that if you tuned in last week, you know that Brother Juan he talked about Palm Sunday, which is a very, very good, it's, a, it's another good story about what happened, the triumph, the entry into Jerusalem, knowing that he is the king, right? And I thank Brother Juan because that was a really awesome study and lesson. But now, after Palm Sunday, this is where this comes in. So there were people that didn't, that they didn't like Jesus. They wanted him to die. They wanted, they wanted, to um, mistreat him. So there was a time that the Bible says that um, they came in the middle of the night and they took Jesus away and they arrested him. So um, it also says that they led him away to um, a very um, uh, important person. His name was Pontius Pilate and he was the governor and they led him there because they wanted um, some of the people that were there, they wanted him to, uh, to put Jesus in jail and, and, and other things than that. So as they led him away, the Bible says, they arrested him. So they put him in jail. And, and when they arrest him, they also put him on a trial. And a trial is like, um, when you stand before people and people bring things that you did that were wrong and they try to prove that you deserve to be in jail. But you see, this was a not a very fair trial to begin with. It wasn't right because they led him away. He hadn't done anything wrong and they led him away right after praying and after he got up. Remember I said he went to the, the, to the, the place of Gethsemane where he prayed to God, not my will, but your will be done. And then when he got up, these soldiers came and they, they, they took him and they arrested him for no reason at all. Then they took him to an important man to be, um, to be put on trial. And it wasn't a very fair thing that they had done to him. And they did all these things in the middle of the night. And, um, and during that time, um, when Jesus was in their custody, which means he was there being arrested by these men, um, he not said a word. 
He not yelled at them. He didn't um, um, use bad language. He um, only spoke the truth when he really needed to, but at most of the time he didn't say anything at all. And uh, you might be asking, well, Sister Della, did Jesus know that these things were gonna happen? And yes, he did know because the Bible talks about these things even before Jesus came, you know? And um, so the Bible says that they led him away and um, they kept, you know, they took him back and forth to one important person to another and both people could not find anything wrong with Jesus, not to arrest him, not even more to crucify him or to put him to die. And they said no, but the crowd that wanted him to die, and remember, this was the same crowd that was cheering him on during that time last week, like Brother Juan talked about, that were praising him, Hosanna, and were um, worshiping him. You know, they were singing, they were praying, you know, um, all beautiful things for Jesus. These were the same people. And all of a sudden, they just turned around and like they didn't like Jesus anymore. So it says that that the important man who was Pilate, you know, he told the people, what do I do with him? Well, there was another prisoner and they wanted that prisoner who had done bad things, they wanted that prisoner released and they wanted Jesus to be taken into custody and, and to be put and to be arrested and to die. And um, so Pilate, you know, really didn't want to, but it says, the Bible says that the crowd kept getting louder and louder and louder, um, you know, put him in jail, crucify him, you know, they kept yelling, yelling. And it also says that, um, that uh, they did all these things, even after Jesus, remember, Jesus had walked before all this. Remember, we had talked about it a little worse. Prior to that, we had learned about um, the, the disciples about um, fishermen, fisher, fishers of men. We talked about, um, remember about the five loaves that, that they gathered, how Jesus would, would get them in, in, in little and tell them stories to the people. They had forgotten, they had forgotten that Jesus healed many people, that he even made some of the blind people that were blind see again. They forgot about all the good things that Jesus had done while he was in their presence, while he was walking with them and with the 12 disciples that were his friends. And they just kept yelling to the guards, crucify him, nail him to the cross. And you know, little warriors, that makes me sad that they would do that. And they forgot all the wonderful things that Jesus had done. But again, remember, there's a happy ending to this story. Amen. And it says that, but not everyone wanted Jesus to die. He had his friends. He had the 12 disciples. He had his brothers. He had his mother. He had his mother. They didn't want him to die. But it says that, and I can only imagine as well how they felt. They felt very sad for Jesus. You know, and it makes me sad just hearing about the story. And it says that they led Jesus away and they led him away and uh, they made him carry a cross. And as they led him away, they, um, they, they, they found him guilty, which means they found him guilty of nothing he had done wrong though. So they found him guilty for no reason. But in their eyes, he was guilty, but he was not guilty of no sin, of no doing, no wrong. But they led him away anyway. They made him carry a cross and he took it up. The Bible says that, that he carried it and he took it up. And there on the cross, um, they nailed him to the cross. And um, I don't know if, if any of y'all can see this right here. The Bible says that, that they nailed him right here and it says that the bible says that that um that he stayed there the bible says he stayed there and um he he stayed there until he died and it says that uh there was a man and he wanted after jesus had died he asked 
Pilate, the, the important person, if he could take Jesus's body down so that he could put it in a tomb, the Bible says, that he could put it in a tomb so that um, he could um, continue to take care of wherever he was buried at. So they allowed him to take the body down and some of his family members and some of his friends, they came and they helped him to take that down. And, and then after that, boys and girls, little warriors, um, they put Jesus' body, after he had died, they put his body in a tomb. And a tomb is a place, um, it's um, a place where they put the bodies in. But it says that Jesus' body was put in a tomb and they put a great rock in front of it. They rolled it so that nobody could come and take it out. And it says, the Bible says that um, during that time, there was, um, right after he had passed away, right after he had died, the people were crying, the people were sad, um, the people that were his friends. But the other people, they, they, it didn't bother them. But, um, and, and great mighty things happened, they said, when Jesus died. Um, things happened in the temple. Um, the, 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 the sun was hidden for so many hours. And some people knew during that time after he died, this truly was the son of God. They had, truly was, Jesus was the son of God. People realized that. So when they put his, his uh, body in the tomb and they put that great, big, big rock, huge, heavy, heavy rock, they put it in front, the Bible says. And the Bible says that after they put him there, Jesus' friends, Jesus' family, those that love Jesus, they thought this was the end, little warriors. How many of you think this was the end for Jesus? I thought this was the end. I thought it was a sad story. It, it's God's story. It's in the Bible. And everyone thought, his friends, they thought this was the end. And they were crying and they they didn't realize or they didn't understand the warriors that why they had done that. But three days later, three days later, boys and girls, this is the good news. I want you to listen and to, to listen really, really good, little warriors. Guess what happened, little warriors? Something, remember I told you that this is going to, it was sad at the beginning, but this was going to have a happy ending. Three days later, the Bible says God sent an angel. Well, why did he send an angel, Sister Adela? He sent an angel to roll the stone away from the tomb where Jesus' body was at. Amen. Praise God. Then the Bible says that some of Jesus' friends, some of the women who came that day, they wanted to see if they could, you know, um, help preserve where Jesus was laying, help take care of. And they saw, guess what they saw? They saw the stone rolled away. And some of the ladies there, they started to cry. Where have they taken our Jesus? Where have they taken our Lord and Savior? They didn't know. They thought someone had stole his body. But remember what I said, who sent the angel? Who sent the angel to roll the stone away from where Jesus was laying? Yes, little warriors, you're right. It was God. It was Jesus' father. He did. He rolled the stone. The angel rolled, away, rolled it away. So the Bible says that um, the angel of the Lord, when they started crying there and, and they started praying, you know, they started crying, the angel of the Lord was there shout it hey jesus is not here he has risen there's no need for crying he's not here anymore 
because Jesus is alive. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen to that. So Jesus wasn't dead anymore, little warriors. The Bible says that after the three days, after they rolled the stone away, he came back to life. He was risen. Amen. I'm going to show you if you just hold on one second. I dropped something. I'm going to show you what happened. Jesus had risen. The stone was rolled away and Jesus was alive. Amen, boys and girls. Remember when I told you, little warriors, that there's a happy ending? Yes, Jesus did die. He died for us. He died for you. He died for me. But he died for our punishment. He died because he had to so that we could be closer to God, so that we could be in heaven. Excuse me. <clears throat> he died for our punishment. He didn't deserve to die. <coughs> it said, Jesus really took our, really took our punishment and proved to be really the son of God. The Bible says, by coming back to life. Amen. And what do you think the disciples, his friends, his family, they were happy. They were ecstatic. They were happy. They were joyful. They knew truly this is the Son of God. <coughs> so this, this, the, the, the story has a happy ending. This is the good news, boys and girls. This is the good news of the warriors. That Jesus didn't stay in that tomb. He didn't stay on the cross. He's alive. And he lives in our hearts. And I want to let you know that for any of you little warriors that say, well, Sister Della, how can Jesus come and live in my heart? Well, do you remember John 3, 16? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Excuse me. Well, that goes for you and I, little warriors. If you don't know Jesus and you want him to come and live in your heart, and that's where Jesus lives. He lives in our heart. But he's alive. Amen. And this is what we call happy resurrection we celebrate easter but we remember it because this is this is where jesus comes back to life he's risen and um he's not in the tomb anymore he's risen and if you want to invite him into your heart today this morning i want to encourage you and i want to say a prayer with you so that you can invite him in your heart and you can you want jesus to live in your heart and it doesn't end there, boys and girls, little warriors. It, it, it gets better. It gets better because now, now that we know that Jesus is alive, we know he lives in our hearts and he's risen and we celebrate Easter for that reason. It's happy resurrection day. We know that he came back to the disciples and he came to talk to them before he went back into heaven. And let me share a scripture with you really quick that I think is so important. The Bible says that in Matthew 27, it says, and Jesus came and he spoke to them. And I feel like Jesus is speaking to us. He's saying this not only to his disciples back then, but he's saying it to us now. He's saying, all authority, all authority has given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. What did Jesus say? He says, go, therefore, and make disciples. That means to teach, to talk about, about Jesus and what he can do and what he has done. And baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, Jesus said, even to the end of age. Amen. So I feel like that Jesus, Jesus is telling us, go. As you get older, as you're learning, you share with what, what you're learning and you share that and that person will share that. See, we all have a job to do and that's our job to share Jesus with other people. And I just want to tell you, you know what? We th There's more to that. Th that's the good news. The good news that, that yes, Jesus died, he, but he died for us and he came back to life and he's telling us to go. And continue and 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 do what he commanded us for to do, and and to share the good news. Remember the good news that Jesus is alive; he's not dead anymore, and he lives in our hearts. And right now, I just want to open this time with, and I want to pray with all of you. If you just want to close your eyes and accept Jesus into your heart this morning, let's just do that right now. For any of you little warriors, let's just say a prayer. And thanking Jesus and thanking the Lord for dying for us. Let's pray. Close our eyes, please. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your son, Jesus, the one true Savior of this world. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know that Jesus is your son. We thank you that even though he had to die for us, we thank you that, that he rose. And right now, dear God, I want to accept Jesus into my heart right now so Jesus can live in my heart and if he can continue to teach me and show me his ways. I invite Jesus because I believe that he is the son of God. I believe, Father, in the Holy Spirit, the helper, the dear God, that comes with knowing Jesus. And I invite you into my heart because your word says that if I believe that Jesus is the son of God, that I, I, I will be in heaven. I, I, I truly am your child. The Bible says, for you so love the world that whosoever believeth, and I believe it, and, and in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that I will have eternal life. And I thank you because he rose. And I thank you because I know that we still have a lot of work to do. And we are to teach these things to other people. Thank you, dear God, and I thank you for coming into my heart this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer, little warriors, I want you to be encouraged, and I want you to know that Jesus lives in your heart now, and he doesn't ever, ever, ever leave you. He stays there. Amen? Amen. So right now, I just want to thank all of you. I want you to share the good news that Jesus is risen. Happy resurrection. And boys and girls, tomorrow is act the actual happy resurrection. So I encourage you to watch tomorrow's service. Amen. And we will see you tomorrow. And also, um, before I forget, I know that y'all had the, the little activity. So while you know, while you're um thinking about what we learned today. I want you to go ahead and do the activity and I want you to post your activity and be encouraged that Jesus is risen. He's not dead anymore. Amen. And that is the good news. So tomorrow, boys and girls, I, I want y'all to join tomorrow for Sunday service. Um, it starts at 1030. And remember, whoever we can get and whoever we can um, um, watch the TV with so that we can praise God and thank him because he died on the cross for us. Amen. Thank you once again for joining me this morning. Um, God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Amen. Thank you, little warriors, for joining. Goodbye. This light of mine.